I've been wanting to do some content to address the Colin Russell, Happy J. Colin Gould, and Rachel Dara Prince attack upon my YouTube channel. I just haven't uh, haven't had the opportunity to really sit down and be in a position to do something like that. So I'm going to use this episode of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot the uh, only podcast of its kind on the internet uh, to address this issue and talk about a little bit maybe the psychology of why someone who fancies themselves as being some sort of leader or commander or judge or general Someone who fancies himself all of these things, uh, why he has to resort to filing a copyright complaint with YouTube in the fiction to put a strike against my channel uh, for basically pointing out his contradictions and his incorrect grammar in a video that he made. Uh, because he has no other way to try and stop me. Because, as I've stated before, and I know 100% for sure, he has no power or authority. He has none. So he has to invoke a third party to try and get me to stop pointing out the obvious inconsistencies and the lack of closure on the grammar from his end. That's as blunt as I can put it. I have never ever been this blunt before. I've never ever been this straightforward before on YouTube. Uh, I've made it I've made it a mission to try and do the best that I can as far as the grammar in that uh, domain goes to really stick with those three principles that I'm always talking about. Iron grace, peace, neutrality, rule, and rule equal. And then I get into this, where I've done several reaction videos to Russell J. Gould, and each one is more successful than the next. The same grammatical errors pop up in the videos. I keep pointing them out over and over. I also point out the inconsistencies in what he says, what comes out of his mouth, and what actually happens. And the best illustration I have of that is the fact that he says he has all this power and all this authority, and yet nothing ever happens. There is no visible... uh, effect that his supposed actions have on the fiction system. Nothing. He has all this power and authority. He comes out saying that he can do this, that, and the third. Yet here he is running uh, to YouTube to file a copyright strike against my channel because I used his video. In one of my videos. Now keep in mind folks. In the reaction video that they took down. I talked about 75 to 80% of the video. And about 25% to 20% of the video. Was replayed footage of Russell talking. If you look at YouTube. And you look at the success of the reaction video. You see Countless, well, I can't even count how many people do reaction videos. They do reaction videos to reaction videos to reaction videos, reusing the content from other channels. People that are way, have way more subscribers, way more views than Russell J. Gould. And they never file copyright strikes. Hell, even music reaction videos, they don't file copyright strikes on YouTube. Now, I looked it up, and 
I'm perfectly cognizant that by using YouTube, the platform YouTube, there are terms and conditions. And that using someone else's video, public video material that they publish on YouTube, does not fall under fair use. Fair use, according to YouTube, can only be determined by a fiction court. Which means that if I would want to address this in the fiction, I would literally have to take it to a fiction court and then they would decide, a third party, they would decide whether Russell's video constitutes fair use or not. As it stands, YouTube uh, is on the side of the content creator, which means the same thing goes for me. Anybody who uses my video material reposts my video on their YouTube channel, uses footage or clips of my videos on their channels, I can do the same thing. I can hit them with a copyright strike if I want to. That's just how it works. I'm well aware of that. Of course, I would never, ever do that. Well, I guess you can't say never, ever, but I can't really think of a scenario where I would ever do something like that. Even if someone was trying to splice a video of mine together to get me to say something that I perhaps didn't say, like create a deep fake, I don't, I don't even think I would do it then because I know what I'm doing is correct. I stand behind my work. I'll take the Pepsi challenge. I'll step up into the light. I will stop and correct if need be. Russell, on the other hand, not so much. Nope. Instead of addressing anything, instead of, as he says, you know, or as he's fond of saying, I've seen him say this, instead of manning up and stepping forward and taking accountability for his mistakes or his errors or his contradictions, or perhaps even offering an explanation as to why he contradicts himself so much and why he uses incorrect grammar, instead of doing any of that, nah. <sighs> He runs behind the scenes and files a copyright strike against me. <laughs> it really is comical, hilarious. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, wow, this, all these years, all these questions I had about this Russell J. Gould character, they're answered. They are answered by this copyright strike. That has been filed against my channel. Now I know what exactly what Russell J. Gould is, what he's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been following this channel, how many years have I been saying that Russell J. Gould is basically his his whole thing is a fiction construct? It's part of the fiction. It's in fiction. I've been saying it for a couple years now at least. Nobody's been listening to me. Well, at least the vast majority of people haven't been listening to me. When you look at, uh, say, for example, a video I just published, a short video, a minute-long video, where I simply scroll down through uh, the four co-creation contract terms, I think it was called. That video, in the first 24 hours, got over 100 views, but it only got 13 thumbs up. And that about sums up the whole psychological condition to state of the majority of the quantum grammar community. And I use that term in the sense that I first used it three or four years ago when I created a video called For the Closure of the Quantum Grammar Community, where I created that term. Now, of course, as has been documented elsewhere, uh, other entities basically took that term and used it as their own for a while, uh, conveniently, as they've taken other things that I've put out there and acted like they came up with it. I'm not really going to say who they is, other than to say that they are directly related to Russell J. Gould, uh, because, well, for whatever reason, maybe they just don't have any good ideas of the for themselves 
or or maybe they don't know what they're talking about they don't have closure on the grammar could be they don't know how to come up with ideas like that maybe there was a time ladies and gentlemen when I wanted to be involved in Russell J. Gould's construct where I was communicating with him my plan was I wanted to be come in as an auditor and then basically start correcting the grammar from the inside out. And I thought, you know, this is how naive I was. I thought, oh, well, a guy that says he's all these things that Russell J. Gould says he is, that he's, oh, he's with the love and the kindness and the humility and taking accountability and being able to take a cold, hard look at yourself and step back and stop and correct and blah, 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 all this stuff he was saying. A guy like that, He'll be able to see once I show him, look, you. this is not correct as grammar, and this is why it's not correct, and this is how you correct it, and this is how we can be 100% correct with our grammar. Look, we can fix this. No, that was pretty naive, naive of me to think that a guy like that, who says he's all these things, would actually perform on those things, because... Well, that's suffice to say I learned different over time. And again, this copyright strike that Russell J. Gould has filed through YouTube against my channel via Daria, or I'm sorry, what the heck, what's her name? Rachel Dara Prince. I have learned exactly who he is and exactly what he's about and exactly how much authority has which he has, which is absolutely zero. Zilch, nada, nothing, nil. The only authority that that guy has is the authority that his followers imbue him with. And again, you know, that's just like the value of something is what you ascribe to it. If you think what he says is valuable, then that's valuable to you. Okay. If you choose to believe in everything he says without any proof or evidence, well, then that's your choice. Contract is by consent. Nobody's twisting your arm to be a cult follower. That's all you. <laughs> but to go back to the uh, quantum grammar community thing in the video that I posted and the number of views that it got in 24 hours versus the number of thumbs up, that is a direct reflection of of the psychological condition of state of the quantum grammar community. Uh, it's by my perception over five years of doing this now, of teaching it, being in the public, speaking with hundreds of people all over the earth, the vast majority of people who do not contact me, the vast majority of people who prefer instead to comment anonymously on my YouTube channel. Those who prefer not to have consults and not to do workshops and not to be serious studiers, those people are more apt to follow someone like Russell J. Gould. They're more apt to be lurkers in the background, watching a video like the one I just posted, but not hitting the thumbs up. That's the kind of per, uh, people they are. They won't hit the subscribe button because they think they're getting something for free. <clears throat> but really what they're getting for free is karma. <laughs> it's like uh, back when they called themselves the Red Thumb Club, there were a couple members who would from time to time email me with grammar questions. Like, Jason, what? What about the, the conjunction and blah, blah, blah? Jason, what, what about this word? How does this work? And then me, with the balance of honor and grace, would graciously give them closure in an email. They would never say thank you. Of course not. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Back then, I had a, a student or two who were a part of those Red Thumb Club meetings, 
who actually took part in them and were a witness to them while this was going on. And they reported back to me that they brought my grammar concepts into their meeting and never mentioned my name in relation to those grammar concepts. They took credit for the grammar concepts themselves, the closures on the conjunction or or whatever it was. Never mentioned my name. The only time they mentioned my name was to call me a piece of shit or a thief or the chief said this about him. He has no authorization. They would only just talk, talk smack about me, never say anything good about me. While at the same time, they're learning from me. A perfect example of that would be I I have the emails on file where they at first were trying to attack me, saying that I was using the conjunction wrong, that it has to be used this way or that way. And then I showed them, I created video after video, email after email, giving them closure as to what a conjunction is and how it's supposed to be used within the you know the context of correct sentence structure, the mathematical interface. Lo and behold, if you look at the way they write grammar now, sounds like they listened. Looks like they listened to what I said. Hey, Syntax Learning Center, i.e. Quantum Community, i.e. Red Thumb Club, i.e. Gordon, Muriel, Joey, Edward, Mari, and whoever else, Russell, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. From the bottom of my heart, you're welcome. If you'd like to continue learning, you're more than welcome to watch the 500 public videos on my YouTube channel. Because if you publish something on YouTube, that means it's in the public domain. No matter if someone says positive about you, or if someone says negative about you. Unless you're maybe a big baby and you can't handle criticism, so you got to run to YouTube. Oh, oh, Jason's pointing out that, that, that I'm not using correct grammar. Oh, Jason pointed out that, that I didn't use correct positionals. Oh, Jason pointed out that my spacing is inconsistent here. And this is a break in the continuance of the evidence. Oh, Jason's pointing out that He's being mean and he's pointing out that I'm contradicting myself. Hit him with a strike. And boom, there you go. That's Russell J. Gould in the nutshell. That's how I see him. <laughs> Literally, that is how I see him. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is just my opinion. You may think different. This is a video of opinion right here. I'm giving an opinion. No pinning contract. Opinion, well, you know what opinions are like. These aren't facts that I'm sharing with you, my perception of of the guy. What are facts, what I can prove, is that he makes mistakes with his grammar. That is a fact. And I have proven that time and time again with the continuance of the evidence. And I've also shown the guy how to correct it. That those are facts. But my perception of him, my opinion of him and his character, that's different. That's open to debate. This is my own personal uh, experience with him. Although I've never met the man, never spoken with him on the phone, I have communicated with him via email since 2017, which are all on file. So I am familiar with the guy. Do have experience with him. And uh, that's that's about all I wanted to say in this episode. Uh that's my opinion of, of the guy. I used to have a lot of respect for him, a lot of honor for him, uh, looked up to him. I once actually sort of participated with him in the same way that uh, his followers do and that I thought he was a hero until I looked a little deeper, until I scratched below the surface. And I found out he's definitely not a hero. Not even a zero. Somewhere below that, actually. Uh, And his followers are a direct uh, reflection of that. Like I've said in the past, the students and the followers 
are direct reflections of the teachers and the leaders. So if your leader is going to badmouth people, be angry, cuss at people, and lie and contradict themselves and use incorrect grammar, chances are you're probably going to do that too. And you can see that in Joey John Lester when you watch those Syntax Learning Center videos where the way he talks, the cadence of his voice, like the phrasing, it's like I'm hearing a mirror of Russell J. Gould's voice. Like, I'll try to do my best approximation of it. Like, when Russell, when he starts to talk like this, and then he does this, and then la 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 Cause la 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 Yeah, that, that kind of thing. That's that cadence, that type of phrasing, that intonation in his voice, that's... You know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, or in their case, maybe insincerest, I don't know. Again, that's my opinion. I just wanted to get this stuff off my chest. This is basically a venting session because of the strike on my YouTube channel, uh, which at this point is not a big deal because I have been in communication with YouTube, and I understand the way it works. I was actually expecting this sooner than it came because I knew sooner or later he would be pushed to do something about it because he can't do anything about it with the correct sentence structure because he he has no power there. He has no authority there. The only authority he has, like I said, is the authority that his little followers give him. But anybody else outside of that who's autonomous and takes you know, authority over themselves and their construct, he can't do anything because that is how fiction and fact interact or for, to be more accurate, don't interact. Fact and fiction can never meet. That's why he can't touch me in the domain of correct sentence structure. That's why he has to try and use the fiction because YouTube is basically a fiction platform. That's all there is to it. Uh, it would be like if uh, there was some sort of dispute where you you go down to uh, say you're going to sell some cassette tapes to me and we go down to Circle K or whatever and say hey we're going to meet you know and uh, you can sell me these cassette tapes and you say okay and then you take the money and run and take off and I don't get my cassette tapes what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to run to the cops, right? To the fiction system. And I'm going to bring them in and I'm going to try and prosecute you to get my money back using a third party interloper entity, fiction court. It's the same thing Russell's doing with YouTube because he can't do anything about it or Rachel Dara uh, Prince can't do anything about it. So they run to YouTube. That's about uh, the size of it, the long and short of it. But I will keep you updated on this uh, scenario as it goes along. I'm definitely going to have to adjust the way I do things on my YouTube channel. Uh, probably also I've been noticing I've been getting a lot of uh, flags for the songs that I use in the videos. Most notably, I got flagged because of my own piece of music that I used got flagged, which blew my mind, which that, that got resolved. Everything has always been resolved. Whenever I've been flagged or, or got a, some sort of strike, I've always challenged it and always won. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. This situation will be no different. I'm 100% confident. I'm just sharing this with you so that more evidence gets out there so that you serious people out there who are seriously invested in learning correct sentence structure can look at this as sort of a pitfall or a landmine to avoid. And Russell J. Gould is one hell of a big landmine. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. 
If you're serious about learning the grammar, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Uh, you can join the channel and, and support it. There are two tiers. Click on the join button and get more information on that. Uh, other than that, I'll uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.